Hola y bienvenidos a Lightspeed Spanish. We are here with Bill Fuller, who is one of our subscribers, one of our ser socios. And Bill is here to tell us a little bit about his learning journey. But first of all, we're going to speak in Spanish, okay? Because Bill's dying to speak in Spanish. ¿Verdad, oh, Bill? Bueno. <laughs> Hola, Bill. ¿Qué tal? Uh, ¿Qué tal estás? Yo estoy fenomenalmente bien. ¿Cómo estás tú? Más o menos. Más o menos. <risa> estoy bien. Muy bien, muy bien. Bill, ¿de dónde eres? ¿Dónde vives? En Texas, en los Estados Unidos. Ah, vale. ¿Y, y tú eres de Texas? ¿Tú? Sí, nací sí, en originalmente. Texas. Sí, sí nací aquí y creció así. Aquí. Qué bien. Qué bien. Bill, ¿a qué te dedicas? ¿En qué trabajas tú? Yo soy tecnólogo de radio, radiología. Oh, eh. una... Ah, vale. Entonces, ¿trabajas en, en, en un hospital? Trabajaba en un hospital, pero ahora en una clínica. En una clínica. Muy bien, muy bien. ¿Y cuánto tiempo llevas en ese trabajo? ¿Muchos años? 30 años, casi 30 años. Mucho tiempo, vamos, mucho tiempo, vamos a decir. Eh, pero Bill, también, aparte de ser médico, eh, eres estudiante de español, ¿verdad? Sí. ¿Y por qué te gusta el español? ¿Por qué te gusta? <risa> Porque hay muchos mexicanos aquí. Digo... Muchos uh, hispanohablantes uh, de, de, de muchos uh, países uh, del sur de, de Texas, de Texas. Sí, sí, sí. Sí, es que aquí, aquí decimos Texas. No sé, ¿allí los hispanohablantes dicen Texas o Texas? Uh, creo que Texas. Mm, mm. Sí. ¿Y cuánto tiempo llevas aprendiendo español? Tengo un po poquito de historia de eso. Un hombre, muchos años, uh, atal, uh, me preguntó, ¿dónde aprendiste el español? As if it was done. Ajá, ¿Dónde aprendiste? Sí. In Texas, you can't get around saying words in, in Spanish. Like delicious or delicioso in ads. So, uh, anyway, comenzó, comencé, yo comencé a hablar, a uh, aprender el español en uh, Austin, en el capital de Texas, uh, en mis 20. Ah, cuando tenías 20 años. So, sí. sí. Oh, vale. Hace pero, tiempo. Sí, pero solamente fuera, uh, era uh, el español del... Uh, sitio de, de trabajo uh -huh. sí, uh, sí. con nacios de México que no hablaban uh, inglés nada un día mi, mi jefe uh, me dijo Bill, keep this guy busy and he only gave me three things to do cutting off a pipe and, and putting a pipe out the wall and so I had to tell this guy I showed him <clears throat> cutting a pipe and then I gave him the cutters and I pointed over there to the other pipes. And he looked at me and he said, the guy's name was Andres Torres. He, he held up the pipe cutters. He said, con esta? I didn't know, I didn't know what the hell he said. Con esta? And I just shoot him away. And then I thought, chili con carne. Con, that means with. And he was holding up, con esta. And that's where it started. It's like, <laughs> from then on, I bought a Spanish-English dictionary. And I carried it with me every day in my back pocket. And I would write in the dirt with these guys. And así fue. Así fue. Y el resto es historia, ¿no? Sí. sí. <laughs> <laughs> y hay mucho más del, de la historia. Sí. Eh, 
Entonces, ¿cómo, ¿cómo estudias? ¿Qué haces? ¿Estudias cada día, cada semana? ¿Qué, uh -huh. ¿Tienes clases? ¿Qué, qué haces? Uh, <coughs> nunca he tenido clases en, en el, en el, formal uh -huh. en español. Uh, hay unos uh, hombres en, uh, en el web... Uh, se llama Light Speed Spanish, creo. Lo conozco, uh, lo conozco. Me suena, me suena. <risa> y eso me ha ayudado mucho. Ah, um, claro. Pero, pues, fue uno, otro hombre, uh, uh, señor Jordan. Sí. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Y uh, yo... Uh, encontró a él antes de ustedes. Ah, sí. Uh -huh. uh, y también un hombre, uh, Jason, señor Jason. I hadn't seen that guy in a long time. Uh, pero todo en, en, en YouTube, más o menos. Sí, sí, uh, sí. Y <ríe> como dijo un, un doctor que tenía en las calles, pero en todo, yo. Sí, sí, sí. Claro, y en tu trabajo, claro, hablas bastante, ¿no? Hay, hay una gran comunidad de, de, uh, de hispanohablantes aquí. Sí, ajá. Y principalmente, ¿son de qué países? ¿De, de América Central, típicamente? Sí, um, Honduras, um, México, por supuesto. Claro. Um, oh, tenía uno, un, un hombre uh, un día que fue de uh, Puerto Rico uh -huh. eh, y uh, estaba, yo estaba sorprendido que él hablaba muy claro y uh, no como puertorriqueños. Sí, tiene mucho acento. I, just, I couldn't believe how clearly he spoke and I was surprised. You know, you know, Bill, I found in my travels now what I realized when I was in Mexico, there's some people that I could understand perfectly, some people I couldn't understand the word they were saying. Here in Spain, there are people that I understand so beautifully when they talk and other people that I can't understand what they're saying. So oh, that guy, you, that guy you had on the other day uh, with the, the bulls, I didn't get any of that. Not a word. <laughs> Antonio. And he mumbled. Oh, oh, I got to tell you that, too. It seems like, and I'm, I'm going to say Mexicans, and I don't mean this to be, uh, uh, when I'm thinking between two languages, I can't think of what I want to say. I don't mean this to be a put down, but uh, Mexicans tend to mumble. And, and I don't know if it's necessarily Mexicans or just people that speak Spanish, or maybe it's just because I don't speak Spanish as well as a native. It just sounds like mumbling. You guys always talk so clearly. Um, and it's like, well, I can understand them. You know, so. Sure. You know, you know what it is that the, it depends on the person. It really does depend on the person. Men tend to mumble more than women. That's what I find. That, that I can understand native-speaking women much more than men as a percentage. Obviously, there's some women I don't understand. But, sure. I, you know, and even now, 17, 20, 20, 20 years down the line, I still have issues with certain people. But what, what I find is that sometimes when people are speaking in English, I have issues understanding some people. <laughs> Por supuesto. <laughs> yeah, and... Uh, So, and, and what I've had is I've had students that tell me, because I, I, in the UK, I taught English as a second language. I, I used to teach a lot of people who, the refugees who were coming to the UK. And they would say to me, Gordon, why is it that we understand what you're saying when you're speaking English, but we don't understand the other teachers? Okay. So I think it's just a style of speaking. If you, if, you know, some people, I mean, my, my purpose is always to, that I want people to understand me. I don't want, what's the point of speaking if people don't understand you? It's my, my belief anyway. Don't, you know, don't speak for, for yourself. You speak for other people. So that's kind of in both in Spanish and in English. My ideal is that everybody understands everything. And obviously Cynthia, because she's a teacher, she speaks very clearly too. Sí, 
en, en, aquí en la clínica cuando tengo un, un hombre de Rusia o un otro país que I don't know the language. Yo trato que hablar un poco más despacio. Claro, claro. Es normal, es, es, es lo que tenemos que hacer. Si tú quieres que la persona te entienda, sí. si no te importa, pues tú hablas como, ¿sabes? como quieras. Um, sí, es, es importante eso, entender. Pues, Bill, I'm going to tell you something because you saw Antonio and he was from Spain, right? He was an, an ex bullfighter uh -huh. and you couldn't understand him. This week in, uh, in Chalk and Talk, in the Ser Socio thing, you're going to see somebody from Mexico and vas a flipar because he is nine out of ten of difficulty. Very, <laughs> very, very difficult. So it's not really the country, it's just the person. It's how they choose to speak, you know? So that's why you've got to choose people at the beginning, certainly for your confidence, choose people that you understand and listen to them because it helps your confidence. And then later you can do the tough stuff, you know? Sí. Uh, cuando una, una persona viene a la uh, clínica, eh, ¿y por qué estás aquí? ¿Ha venido aquí antes? Sí. Uh, ¿Por qué estás aquí? Well, I'll get why they're there. Mm -hmm. ¿Por qué estás ahí? Están ahí. Pero uh, 90, no, not 90, 50%. 35% slides right past me. But, you know, and then I can slow them down once I get back to talk to them. Why are you here? ¿Qué pasó? So. Yeah. Yeah. And what, again, another thing that I've noticed as well is that when we're learning as students, we believe that we should be able to understand every word that somebody says. You know, that's what we want. That's our goal, isn't it? But what's really interesting is that often when, you, when you're listening to somebody in your own language, we've done these tests where they say, right, somebody's going to talk to you, and then you're going to tell me what that person said. And we're not very good at it. We're not very good at saying word for word what the person said. We can just generally talk about an idea because we don't process language that way, word for word. We tend to process ideas. And it's the same in Spanish. You know, we can – we often – are very tough on ourselves, but we should give ourselves a break by saying, look, you know, if I can get the idea, it's just what you're saying. You know, if I get the general idea why they're here, we don't need word for word. And what, what did you say there? You know, it's that, that idea. So that's what we have to go for. Exactly. And it's, uh, I, you know, everybody goes through this, I'm sure. Uh, but there was a point where uh, somebody would be talking to me like, oh, I heard that word. I know that word. And you're trying to translate that word, and then you've missed half the <laughs> half the conversation. So uh, it, I'm to the point where you know I, I don't have to do that. I, I I can just hear I can hear the idea coming across rather yeah. than rather than the words. Yeah. So you know that that's a good thing. Uh, and you talk about now. You see, you've had a big advantage. You've had Cynthia. Uh, I don't have somebody I can talk to every day. Oh, and tú y yo tenemos la misma edad. Sí. Ah, See, yeah. I'm, I'm 56. Your your birthday is in April? Uh, August. 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 Well, I'm a little bit older than you. I was born in February, but I'm 64. And uh, so um, it's it's been a long time. And, you know, sometimes I think I should be able to speak a whole lot better than this, but I live in the United States and I don't speak with somebody every day in Spanish. So es un poco diferente. Sí, y yo tuve la, la suerte de poder vivir dos años en México. Eso también. Y luego 17 años con Cintia. Así que sí. así que sí, he tenido mucha suerte en cuanto a eso. So, uh, Back to my story. So, trabajaba con los uh, nacios de México mm -hmm. uh, en, en mis 20. En mis, uh, temprano en mis 20. Pero después de eso, decidí regresar a la escuela. Y por eso yo soy tecnólogo de radiología. 
uh, x-ray tech for, mm -hmm. for to understand what the hell I'm saying. Uh, y después de eso, trabajando en el, en el hospital, teníamos unos, uh, ¿cómo se dice? Papeles uh, laminadas que tenían uh, con un uh, anillo que tenían frases en español. Ajá. Apuéstase aquí, pon su pecho aquí. Uh, frases así para hacer que la, la, la paciente sabe qué tienen que hacer para hacer el examen. So, eso está, uh, eso uh, ayuda, pero solamente tenía, uh, te, tuve que hablar, we say, I had to speak at the people, not with the people. You can say hablar a la gente y no con la gente. Exactly. Y so, en, en, ese, en, en esa manera, uh, yo podía hablar con alguien para cinco minutos y ellos comienzan a hablar con mí. Uh, yo no hablo español. Well, you were just talking to me for 20 minutes. Yeah. So it was a real weird deal. I had to talk at the people. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, what were the kind of learned learned phrases that you were saying? Exactly. And like you, I, I sing. And so I'm a good mimic. I like to sound like the, the song that I'm singing. Uh, and so uh, I had a good accent. Uh, and it sounded like I knew what I was doing. But when they would turn and talk to me, I, I, I don't speak Spanish. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it was really funny I, to me, anyway. Pero en esta clínica, yo tengo que hacer, um, no sé cómo decirlo en, en inglés, porque es una, una palabra de, de francés, triage. Joder, no sé. Tria, triage? No, uh, no, uh, no, no. Pero sabes... Sí, sí, sí. Ajá, ajá. So, uh, en eso tengo que uh, hablar con la gente, no a la gente. Sí. So, Bill, um, just the last question. Where did you find, when did you find Lightspeed Spanish? When did you discover it? I don't know what year I started with you guys as a socio. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but, yeah, you know, I found you all on YouTube and... Sure. Um, And like I said, I, I just appreciated so much how much y'all did What, it, to me because I didn't understand YouTube quite so much at the time. But I figured, oh, they're doing all this shit for free, all this stuff for free. Excuse me. Uh, and um, but I know that y'all you get something out of YouTube when even when you're putting free. You know, I, I stuff And let me tell you what what, what happens. YouTube is, has been helped us so much. Thank thank God for YouTube. Without YouTube, you know, we wouldn't be where we are. But there's this misconception about what YouTube pays, and lots of people think. I mean, here in Spain, they go somebody somebody has a video. Let's say it has a thousand views. They go, they're, they're raking it in. Look at them. They'll be they'll get be getting lots of money. We have forty thousand subscribers, and and I don't know how many thousands of views we have a month and what we get is 150 dollars a month from that so youtube itself is isn't our income absolutely not never has been well and, and i figured i mean like i said i didn't know how youtube worked and i don't know you know that's not the point my point was that you did it for so long you put so much out there that was just so helpful and and that you know and i watched y'all you guys all the time um and then when i saw this their socio i thought well you know i gotta help these guys out i mean it was they, they did so much and they put out so and you still do yeah. and i don't know I, the last couple of videos i've seen on youtube it's like you, you said we're back I don't know. We're starting what, again. What, we're starting again with the podcast, the, the video cast. Now that we that we did before. I mean, I guess I've been with 
the San Socio for so long that I, I didn't necessarily notice you were gone. <laughs> We've never been gone, but we have a, our presence on YouTube changed a little bit. Now we're going back to where we were. You know, uh, I'll just before we finish, Bill, I'll tell you that, that when we started, what I realized was that if we wanted to make this work, what we had to do was we had to give first. Very important. I believe that's how the universe works, that you must give. And then, you know, then you get. And yeah. so we were, we started just pouring out lots and lots of free stuff. There's lots and lots and lots of resource. And I had a number of people who said to me, what are you doing, God? What are you doing? Why are you giving away all this free material? And I was saying, well, I believe that the people, some people that are watching this will feel, you know, that they want to help us and they'll buy some help sheets, you know, because we sell the help sheets. Well, you'll never make anything. And, and these are people who, who I actually trusted at the time, but I just thought, no, I think I'm doing the right thing. And, and then it took us two years, two years, nothing happened. And after two years, suddenly people started saying, I'm going to buy your help sheets because you've given us so much. It's, it's exactly what you're talking about. And I think that's been, that's what actually kept us going because we thought, well, look, we'll give it first. And then people were saying, yeah, thank you very much. Now I'll buy something. You know, so it, it worked. And, and that's what we, we always try to do. And that's why we're back in YouTube now. We're going to go and give a lo and load of free content again. Well, good for you. I feel like I didn't speak Spanish very well through this whole thing, but... Uh... You've done fantastically well. Listen, uh, Bill, there is nothing more unsettling than doing a Zoom call with somebody and meeting me for the first time and me meeting you for the first time and then you happen to speak Spanish. If, I, I promise you, if we were sitting for the next hour and you got out a couple of beers, I don't know if you drink, I don't drink, but if, for example, a couple of beers and we sat, you would find everything would change. You would just, yeah, is that, is that beer? Give me in, give me in. And you would just chill out and everything would be super. It's always a bit sort of, a bit hit and miss at the beginning, yeah? But you've done really well. And I've understood everything that you said. Yeah, well, this has been fun, and uh, it's, it's been great talking to you. And uh, where's Cynthia? Cynthia's she, downstairs with the children. She's a lot cuter than you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I do the best I can. <laughs> I've had my hair cut. <laughs> okay, Bill. Pues muchísimas gracias por la conversación. Ha sido muy interesante hablar contigo, conocerte, sabes, cara a cara. Un pregunta. Have you ever seen Sol y Viento? It's a movie. Uh, Sol y Viento. No. It, it's a movie that's uh, intended to, for teaching. Ah, okay. Uh, Sol y Viento. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a good movie, uh, but it's uh, very uh, instructional. And, and the people talk slowly and clearly. Um, and anyway, Sol Okay, I'm sure you can look that up. Sun and, and wind. Uh, maybe talk to your your students about that. But yeah. uh, anyway. Okay. Something you just said, ha sido something anyway. But pero, que tengas un buen día. Muchísimas gracias. Eh, y tú también. Entonces, nos vemos pronto. Y nos vamos. Y nos vamos. <laughs> Adiós.